the blessed throwback thursday march the 10th 2022 it's about uh 4 22 uh p.m i greet all human beings all around the world with the universal greetings of peace and the blessings of god be with you it doesn't matter what your political philosophical personal nor your religious beliefs may be it doesn't matter whether you're the richest to the poorest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't even matter whether you're the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor my proclaimed enemies. It doesn't matter whether you like me, my YouTube videos, or anything I say or do. I greet all you all with that same universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. Today I want to talk about... Uh, leadership uh, not just leadership I want to talk about complaints not just talk about complaints but I'm talking about complaints by some that seem to be worthy to address and some not you see it's complaints here in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County that some people is complaining about now about certain officials and certain uh, places and the people that they're complaining about now it was complaints about them 10, 15, maybe longer years ago but the wrong person was complaining. I want to talk about Carbondale, Illinois, Jackson County, the same thing. Where certain people complaints being heard and some aren't. You see, but all of the people is complaining about the same people, places, and things. You see, I'm going to tell you some personal stories. You see, I'm going to start off here in Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County. I'm not going to tell you all of them. I can tell you all of them about me and my two daughters, but I'm going to just tell you about my two daughters. Uh, their complaints when they was one and two years old. Their complaints was uh, about the Charles, Missouri Police Department in violating their civil and human rights on May the 19th, 2008, about a little bit after midnight. That was on Malcolm X's birthday. May he rest in peace. But my two little girls, Birdie and Queen, was in the bed sleep. So was I. A little bit after midnight on May the 19th, 2008, uh, uh, it was a knock on the door. The knock on the door was their mother on the outside of the door with the Charleston, Missouri police sergeant and officer. You see, uh, two days prior to them knocking at the door, I went down to the police department, the Charles, Missouri Police Department, and informed them that their mother, my two children's mother, who they was one and two years old at the time, left the house and didn't come back. It was obvious to them because they already knew it was obvious to me and other people in the community uh, what she was out in the streets doing. Some people have illness, some people have sicknesses, some people have weaknesses. But what she wasn't doing, she wasn't here helping take care of our two children's who was one and two years old, going on two and three in July of that same year. 
I opened up the door and they told me that a judge gave them uh, a expose for then my wife, which was my kid's mother, for her to have the house and the children. And I told him it wasn't happening. The sergeant pulled his gun on me, made me sit down. They woke up my two babies in the middle of the night. No, no DCF, no children and family services to come to evaluate the situation because if had they evaluated it, my daughters and them would have never left the house. And possibly their mother would have been in custody of these police instead of a judge giving her a expose to get my children. She didn't want to stay in the house because of the neighbors knew what she had done and what she was doing. You see, I went to the leaders in this town. No help. But these organizations and some of these same people that I meet with sometimes They knew what was going on, but they didn't say nothing. But my daughters, we had a court date for June the 3rd, but these leaders, police department, and some of these, I mean, black and white people, helped her get out of the state of Missouri, the city of Charleston, to Chicago, with no plan. Let me show you what the plan was. This was the plan, y'all. Ain't nobody ever seen my kids, children like this. Take a close-up look at Birdie to the, to the right. Look how her eye is. Take a look at her right arm. You can't see it right now, but you're going to see it in a minute. You see, I had some people. This is in Chicago, Illinois, in Cabrini Green on Cambridge Street, where their mother left them. And I'm gonna show you who she left them with while she go get what she was getting down here in the streets of Charles, Missouri, in the police department, in these shelters, the people that run the shelters, they knew black and white, but nobody didn't stand with me. That's Queen, y'all. You see, Bertie, you see that right arm? Keep focusing on her right arm. There's something wrong with it, but I didn't know at the time. This was in July. Their birthday was coming up to make them current two and three. Look at Bertie Eye real close, y'all. Mama ain't came back yet. But see, God allowed me to have somebody 400 miles away located my babies for me to come in, to come down there and get them. You see how Bertie was able to raise one arm, but she ain't able to raise the other one? When well, she got the sippy cup in her arm. Now, this is who they was left with. You see what they doing? I don't care who they are. If you bold enough to let one drug addict have you to watch their children while they go make some money, then you deserve to be exposed. You see what's in their hands? Drugs. You see the female recognize somebody taking pictures of them. So this is what they did. But you know, Queen knew it was help coming. Now that's sad, you know what I mean? That uh, these people that I'm meeting with in these meetings down here, you see, now they complaining about the same people I complained about at first. Now they complaining about them. They didn't see no problem with them then. But let me show you the results of what happened with my baby Birdie. You see what's on her right arm? It's a cast. You see, the police in Chicago, Illinois, the police in Charleston, Missouri, Department of Children and Family Service in Chicago, Illinois, Department of Children and Family Service in Charleston, Missouri, they didn't give a damn about what happened to these two children. They wouldn't even make no police reports, but you see the smiles on their face, you see how clean they are. You see that? This is with the same month or uh, maybe a month after 
I got them back from Chicago in the streets. You see them? You taking a good look at them? You taking a good look at them? Not my same little baby. Her arm, according to the doctor in St. Louis, when I got them back down to Charleston and took them to Sykeson, and Sykeson had me to go to St. Louis, they said Bertie's uh, right elbow had been fractured for a minimum of two weeks. It could have been way longer than that. In the streets with no medical attention. The queen told me <laughs> partially of what happened. Now, Bertie was just turned two on there and Tween just turned three. Now, three years later, Bertie didn't know that the bus driver at the school when she was in kindergarten, five years old, was going to bruise her on the bus by herself. And the school resource uh, officer, this happened February the 1st of 2012. I complained about it. Complained about the police resource officer. Plain, complained about the school. But you see, I'm the only one was complaining. I had went to the FBI. I had went to the Illinois State Police. I even wrote President Obama and Michelle Obama, and they finally had the Department of Education Civil Rights Division in Washington, D.C. to take a look at it, and they seen something was wrong, and then they sent it to Kansas City. Kansas City came down, but guess what? Politics played a key role. Black people wouldn't speak up in the school. They said it was me. So they dismissed what that bus driver did, allowed him to get back to Arkansas where he can do it to some more children. You see what I'm saying? Because there's no record of it because they found no probable cause. You see what I'm saying? Solely because wouldn't nobody speak up. The resource officer, the police resource officer, still the same one today, tried to tell Bertie to say that the bus driver was trying to help him. Bertie said, I didn't tell him that, Poppy. He wasn't trying to help him. Picked up by the back of a back, backpack. Had on the bus with her just about every day, on the bus with her for at least about 20 or, or 15 to 20 minutes. When I signed the contract, was she supposed to be sitting in the office at two from 2.45 to 3 o'clock till her sister queen got out so she could ride the bus with them because she had been having problems. You see, didn't nobody see no problem with that. But I go to these meetings down here now, sit down with people that knew about this. Now they complaining about what the, the resource officer in the schools and the racism in the police department now because it's happening to them and they family. But I still sit and listen. You see, I joined the NAACP. And my two daughters joined them, even though the NAACP wouldn't do nothing. But let me tell you this here. The only NAACP people that recognized us is the uh, National Conference President in St. Louis, Missouri. And a brother man in Carbondale, Illinois, in the National Chapter. They recognized us. You see what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you in essence. You see, now, when certain people complain, it's a problem, but look what happened to them, but they still strong. You see what I'm saying? Didn't nobody recommend to me, uh, get your daughter some counseling. I seeked out counseling in Cape Garada, Missouri, a white female psychologist from out of Jackson that worked in Sykeson, worked with my babies for eight years. She didn't have to work with them for the whole eight years, but she wanted to continue to see them. And she wrote letters and saying that the bus driver was out of line. The police department was out of line. The school was out of line. 
in the leaders in Charleston, Missouri is pitiful. It's coming from a white woman. And I agree with her 100%. But you know, that's just to show you some of the stuff been happening to my children. But God allowed me after 70 days and 70 nights, these poor babies were suffering in Chicago. In the streets, homeless. May their mother rest in peace. But let me show you something else, y'all. With Carbondale. <laughs> Somebody hung my son down there, y'all. Brian Lamont Johns. It was 356 days ago. It happened Friday, March the, the uh, 19, 2021. The police in Carbondale, Illinois, and the prosecuting attorney trying to say he committed suicide. I'm not going to show y'all the pictures like I showed of Birdie and Queen because they, they pretty graphic. But I wrote the Illinois State, uh, the Illinois Eternal General, Raul, I guess that's how you pronounce his name. I sent a certified return letter to him on January the 3rd, 2022. I sent one to his office in Carbondale. It re they received it because I got the return uh, slip. I sent one to his office in Chicago. I got the return email from FedEx and I sent one to the one in Springfield. And do you know today, been over two months, he haven't, he haven't responded, nobody from his office responded as if I never sent it, but my son is dead. The police didn't do nothing about my baby being taken illegally out of my house. Arm being, elbow being fractured in the streets. They had multiple mosquito bites. They was malnourished. They was dehydrated. They was terrified. But yet all these people that talk about me, I took care of these girls by myself. There's no organizations or nobody down here but except my elder neighbors and her family and her husband. They helped. But can't nobody else down here say they helped. But I just want to show y'all on March the 19th of this year, 2022, it's going to mark the first year anniversary. I'm going down to Carbondale. You see, I filed a, a, a complaint with the NAACP in Carbondale, Illinois. On May the 11, 2021. Do you all know they haven't gave me a response yet? They haven't met with me not one time. You know why? Because the president, the female from Chicago, I believe, tied with SIU, tied with the chief of police, one of their other members, go to the same church as the president of the of the uh, Carbondale, Illinois, uh, 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 NAACP, one of the uh, 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 Carbondale uh, City Council ladies, black, both of them black, is, is on the city council. So it's a conflict of interest. You see, all these groups down here, they having another Breon Taylor march. Breon Taylor wasn't from uh, 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 Carbondale, Illinois. May she rest in peace. It made justice be done. But you see, they had a march for her last year. They had one for George Floyd last year. They just had one for uh, Amir Lockett this year. SIU and some of these black NAACP people and some of these black women that has these black organizations. But you remember, all of them getting money or they tied with the city somehow. They haven't marched for them, but ain't now one of them had a march. Ain't now one of them spoke up. Now I'm talking about Brian Lamont Johns, but that's my son. You see what I'm saying? I joined the NAACP because I thought they might start, you know, doing something. I was told that the, 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 the Illinois chapter, not the one in Carbondale, but the Illinois chapter would start getting involved. The FBI know about it. But this is what I want to say, y'all. 
I want y'all to, any of y'all that, Illinois or any place else, contact uh, Congressman Duckworth and Congressman uh, Dick Durbin or Senator Dick Durbin and Senator Duckworth. They just had a bill uh, introduced that I think Bobby Rush out of Illinois introduced it, a Emmett Tibbs uh, bill concerning lynching. My son was lynched. He was found hung. Any of y'all that know the Illinois Attorney, Attorney General, Attorney General, ask them why it's been two months and they ain't even, they can just talk, tell me, well, we not going to get involved. They didn't even respond. But it's a black man. That's why I told you I don't look at color no more. You see what I'm saying? Ain't no black organizations helping me. I got white and black people that's helping me in Carbondale, Illinois, to try to get justice for my son. But they ain't none of these groups. The groups is getting money. You see, either the groups is tied with the city, the police. If you see the investigation, the death investigation, ain't nam newspaper in this country Put my son's death in the paper. If you Google it up, you will find it nowhere but on my YouTube channel. That's what they thought of my son because he black. Because he been to prison. Because he was on drugs and because he was homeless. But that was my son. That was my firstborn. And I would die getting him justice. I'm going to be straight up with y'all. I think the police, Carbondale Police Department, had something to do with his murder. I believe the school, the white school teacher and her black Muslim husband had something to do with my son's murder because they had his food stamp card and other homeless people's food stamp card. But the, the, the thing about my son's food stamp card, he was found hung, lynched on March the 19th, 2021. And this white school teacher was found on video spending my son's food stamps on April the 29th, 2021, 30 something days after my son's death. And do you know the prosecuting attorney in Jackson County, the Spanish guy that y'all just voted in, he asked me, did I want him to prosecute her? I had two witnesses, a preacher that I know ain't a sellout out of Marion, Illinois, and a preacher I know ain't a sellout come from Florida. Them the only ones came with me. Ain't none of them other leaders. I done came down to all type of meetings here in Charleston, Missouri, all type of meetings in Carbondale, all type of marches. But ain't none of them helping me. Not one. Now, it's some people here in Charleston, Missouri, husband and wife, I ain't going to mention their name. <laughs> they've, been, they've been helping me and my children out when they found out my daughter's and their mother died. They came and brought my daughters them some money. They told us when you go to Chicago, we want to help you. But ain't too many people, <laughs> ain't too many people stood out. Ain't nobody marched with us yet. It's just been me and my two daughters. You see what I'm saying? And my grandchildren. But I'm going to get justice, y'all. You know, those of y'all that's telling me to change the reward that I put from 500, I'm going to tell you again. You said make it 10,000. How's I'm going to make it 10,000 when I'm struggling with the 500 and you ain't gave me damn penny when we drive back and forward from Charleston, Missouri to Carbondale. When I go make these here flyers, you ain't gave me a penny. So what I'm going to make it 10,000 for? If you're going to make it 10,000, then let's take that 10,000, most of it, and pay a lawyer or some investigators to get justice for my son. Peace be still.